there today is the 12th April 2017 we call it a holy week in Christianity today is uh, Wednesday tomorrow Holy Thursday then Holy Friday called known as Good Friday and Easter so I'm reflecting on Jesus crucifixion for a long time I wanted to make a, a documentary on crucifixion I am really fascinated about the, our human past how did we do all that our ancestors we always think they are wonderful people but how could they think about the concept of crucifixion we had gruesome capital punishment for another human being that is one human being inflicting on another human being so our human past is gruesome it's a grisly experience let us talk about crucifixion some of the descriptions are very graphic so I warn you in the beginning itself if you have a weak heart or if you don't want to hear uh, violence this is not the talk for you so anyway it is nice to know during this week what happened what really happened to Jesus we always talk about his pain and we don't experience his pain but I think through this talk we will have a small clue and you yourself can experience that when the nail is driven into his wrist I think the same nail goes through our own wrist and probably causing shock waves across the shoulder and all the way to the brain Anyway, crucifixion, Jesus faced a horrible death, that is the fact. Crucifixion sometimes began with the scourging, also known as flogging of the victim's back. The Romans used a whip called a flagrum, flagrum which consisted of small bones and metal pieces attached to a number of leather strands. The number of blows given to Jesus is not recorded. However, the number of blows in Jewish law was 39, one less than the 40 called for in the Torah to prevent a counting error. During the scourging, the skin was ripped from the back, exposing a bloody mass of tissue and a bone. Extreme blood loss occurred, often causing death or at least unconsciousness. In addition to the flogging, Jesus faced severe beating and torment by the Roman soldiers including the plucking of his beard and the piercing of his scalp with the crown of thorns. After flogging or scourging the victim was often forced to carry his own crossbar which is known as patibulum patibulum that is the cross section of the cross all the way he has to carry to the execution site the patibulum could easily weigh 100 pounds that is 50 to 60 kilograms we are talking about in the case of Jesus the record shows that he may have carried his patibulum to the distance of over two football fields 
in a weak and tormented state. It's no wonder the record establishes that Jesus needed a great deal of assistance. Once the victim arrived at the execution site, the patibulum was put on the ground and the victim was forced to lie upon it. Spikes about seven inches long and uh, three by eight of an inch in diameter were driven into the wrist. The spikes would hit the area of the median nerve causing shocks of pain up the arms to the shoulders and neck. Already standing at the crucifixion site would be the seven foot tall post called as types. In the center of the stipes was a cruel seat to support for the victim. So the straight post in the cross is called type. The cross section of the cross is called patibulum. The patibulum was then lifted onto the stipes and the victim's body was awkwardly turned on the seat so that the feet could be nailed to the stipes. At this point, there was tremendous strain put on the wrists, arms and shoulders, resulting in a dislocation of the shoulder and elbow joints. The position of the nail body held the victim's ribcage in a fixed position which made it extremely difficult to exhale and impossible to take a full breath. Having suffered from the scourging and flogging, the beatings and the walk with the patibulum, Jesus was described as extremely weak and dehydrated. He was probably losing significant amounts of blood as time passed, loss of blood and lack of oxygen would cause severe cramps, spasmodic contractions and probably unconsciousness. Ultimately, the mechanism of death in crucifixion was suffocation. To breathe, the victim was forced to push up on his feet to allow for inflation of the lungs. As the body weakened and pain in the feet and legs became unbearable, the victim was forced to trade breathing for pain and exhaustion. Eventually the victim would succumb in this way, becoming utterly exhausted or lapsing into unconsciousness so that he could no longer lift his body off the stipes and inflate his lungs. Due to the shallow breathing, the victim's lungs would begin to collapse in areas probably causing hypoxia. Due to the loss of blood from the scourging, the victim probably formed a respiratory acidosis resulting in an increased strain on the heart which beats faster to compensate. Fluid would also build up in the lungs. Under the stress of hypoxia acidosis, the heart would eventually fail. There are several different theories on the actual cause of death of Jesus. One theory is that there was a filling of the pericardium with fluid which put a fatal strain on the ability of his heart to pump blood. Another theory states that Jesus died of cardiac rupture. Another theory is that Jesus' death was multifactorial and related primarily to hypovolemic shock, exhaustion, asphyxia, 
and perhaps acute heart failure. Regardless of the actual medical cause of final death, the historical record is very clear. Jesus suffered numerous hours of horrible and sustained torture on the cross of Calvary. The crucifixion accounts of Jesus Christ are in entire agreement with the customs and practices of the Romans in that period. The evidence for Christ's horrible and painful death is unquestioned by today's legitimate scholars. The only dispute is the nature and character of the criminal Jesus Christ. Look at the record yourself, even with all the pain Jesus thought of others rather than himself. His first words from the cross were, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. He thought of his mother who stood by the cross weeping and asked his beloved disciple John to take care of her. On other on the either side of Jesus were two thieves executed at the same time. When one of them accepted Jesus as Lord, Jesus shared with him, Today shall you be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. Finally, Jesus expressed his complete surrender to the will of God and he said, It is finished. John 19, 30. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23, 46. Investigate the historical record and then examine your heart. Jesus gave himself willingly for you and for me. Jesus suffered a horrible death for you and Jesus loved us so much that he willingly died in utter shame and pain for our sins. In fact, the Bible teaches us that he who was without sin was literally made sin for us. God in human form allowed himself to be made sin to save us on the cross. He bore all the world's sin because of his love. The only way to complete his story of love is to love him in turn. Have a nice day. Bye.